Philanthropy is increasingly an important policy player in education in countries, many different countries around the world. And that varies from having a role in the policy process to funding and sponsoring various programs which are meant to provide innovation in education to actually acting as contractors to the state to run state services on behalf of the state. So if we want to understand education, education policy, education reform at the present time, one of the actors that we have to take account of is philanthropy. I'm interested in philanthropies that have direct or indirect relationships to business. Part of my research in the past has been looking at and still is looking at edu businesses, businesses that make money out of education. And many of the, the, the big philanthropies, the Gates, the Dells, the, the Broads, the Walmarts, etc., have a, a, a hands-off, indirect relationship to their commercial origins. And many of them are committed in particular to increasing the digitalization of education as a reform strategy, which relates back to the profitability of their, their parent companies in many respects. So I'm particularly interested in how those foundations which have a relationship back to business operate in relation to education. Basic understanding of education is the fact that it's a basic human right, so everybody should be entitled to it, one. Two, well, education is both a private good and also a public good, which means it probably it has um, private benefits and social benefits. So at the end of the day, as much as we want to think that government is um, largely responsible for education, we also have to think about the fact that the public, or the um, private sector, can complement and supplement it. Com you know, when you look at the fact that you know, beyond the fact that it's just the private, it's, it's also a private, it has private benefits, it also has public benefits. So it's not just government, but then definitely the private sector also has to, you know, has a role to play in supplementing what the government has done and also in, you know, complementing as well. So really, I think a philanthropist plays a relevant role in bridging that gap between, you know, places where there's um, limited resource, yeah, because essentially at the end of the day, everything goes round. <laughs> Everybody gets to benefit from education. So, This is actually the inaugural event of a whole series uh, called Philanthropy in Education. And maybe I should say how we, the, the subtitle of the series, it is called Global Trends, Diverse, no, sorry, Global Trends, Regional Differences, Diverse Perspectives. And for a reason we have picked the subtitle. First of all, because there is a global trend that there is a shortage of ODA funds, official development assistance, and there is a need for PDA, private development assistance. So this, there is an agreement on that. But how to achieve that and what impact it has, that's where the diverse perspectives comes in. Uh, it is a, for us, for NORAG and the Graduate Institute, it's an inaugural symposium and it has greatly resonated a lot of academics doing research on that, but also think tanks, independent think tanks, as well as foundations themselves are here to engage in a dialogue. And that's where the diverse perspectives come in. There is disagreement, but we try and we have great material to discuss uh, diverse viewpoints on that issue and we consider ourselves as what we would call an honest broker to engage dialogue on those issues, to produce research, to provide evidence on reasons, impact, best practices, but also challenges in this field of philanthropy and education. So from the Global Partnership for Education's perspective, foundations present uh, and philanthropy presents uh, essentially an opportunity for bringing different types of assets to bear on policy dialogue, on advocacy, on technical collaborations, as well as finances as well. Uh, and GPE's core model is really strengthening uh, national education sector plans and perceives that foundations and philanthropy in general really brings this suite of assets uh, in a way that can be highly um, innovative, uh, new, um, but it's important to bear in mind that innovation uh, is quite controversial, 
Uh, some innovations can be very positive, other innovations can actually be quite unsuccessful, but ultimately that foundations bring with them a, a mix of different intellectual, political, social and financial capital that has not been systematically harnessed and has not been brought to bear on national uh, planning cycles. I think in addition as well, the philanthropic community is fairly kind of disparate. Um, I think that there are different uh, types of foundation as well as has been discussed here and there's a real need to really disaggregate and have a typology that uh, informs the kind of motivations and the kind of incentives of different types of uh, philanthropic giving uh, and foundations, namely between family, uh, private and corporate foundations because all of these are very different uh, and I think that there is a risk on the assumption of a kind of a homogenous community, if you will, within the foundation space uh, poses a risk of not properly understanding the different dynamics, the different uh, incentives, uh, and how best to harness their comparative advantage uh, and meet that with uh, GPE's comparative advantage.